What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York, and on the phone we got Dom from Nothgard. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. Nice for having me here. Yeah, it's so awesome to have you here, even though, you know, the circumstances for the world aren't at the best, but you just released the new single, Light Crawler, which is absolutely awesome. Could this serve as maybe like a clear representation to what the follow-up to Malady X will sound like, or is this just a, a one-off sort of thing? So, first of all, thank you very much. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I think this is kind of the direction we're aiming for for the next album, and we are working on the next album, but uh, as for almost every band, uh, Corona fucked up all schedules, so yeah. Uh, but this will be the direction. Okay, like, so is this the only song that we have written for the potential next Northgard album, or is there other stuff hidden that uh, obviously, you know, we can't hear yet? <laughs> there are plenty of other songs, but they are not completely finished yet. Uh, I think um, we're working on song number nine right now uh, but we always like to have a little bit more songs and then we can simply choose uh which can make it on the album or not mm -hmm. well when you look at like the entire north guard catalog when you compare malady x to the sinner's sake and age of pandora and so on do you take a new approach to every single album or is there kind of like a sound that you try to stick with in the band well of course, uh, we try to stick with a specific North Guard, with a, speci uh, with a specific style, you know. Um, but of course, we always try to approach it a little bit different because I think that this makes a difference. We, we do not want an album after album to sound the same, you know. A different approach means a different outcome. So. This is why it's good, but of course we always try to keep the same kind of elements, like double leads, uh, fast solely, and uh, yeah, so the, the, the style remains, but the approach is different. Mm -hmm. D is there like a preconceived idea when making music on how you want it to sound, or does it kind of just happen that way, like happy accidents, as I call it? Uh, yeah, I think uh, nowadays it's it was a progress. At the at the beginning, when we worked on the debut album, of course, it was just we we had no clue how we wanted to sound, and <laughs> we also had no clue what we are actually doing. So uh, nowadays, we we kind of know what we wh how we want to sound, and of course, then we we can work on it. You know, so it's a little bit easier nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would hope that maybe like when you when making obviously making an album is never easy, but as you've been doing it for so long, it has to maybe get a little bit easier as it moves along, right? Yeah, true, true. You 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 know, when I start a song, I kind of know how it should sound, or should it be a fast song, a mid tempo song, or uh, the, the the main theme, or the, the 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 feeling of the song. You know, back in the days, I just sat there and play the guitar and then you know of I, I composed the song <laughs> you know now it's a little bit different yeah. when it comes to all the projects that you're involved with between Northgard and equilibrium and your time with wolf chant is like they're a mind fr is it a different mind frame depending on the project that you're working with or is there a usual method behind the madness that applies to everything <laughs> good question um there's a different approach, of course, there are different members who are the main songwriters, so the, the, the roles I play in each band or play, because I'm not a member of Wolfchand anymore, is different. So Northgard was, is pretty much my baby, I founded the band, so I play a different role within the band than in Equilibrium. In Equilibrium I'm more, you know, <laughs> more into the management stuff and uh, tour management thing, and Rene is doing the composition, so of course it's a little bit different. So if Equilibrium ever tours in the U.S. and I'm interviewing you guys, you'll be the you'll be the tour manager I contact to, when I'm at the venue. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's very likely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah. Um, when you look at the entire North God catalog, when you compare, you know, like all these different albums, is it almost kind of like representative, like on who you are at a particular time? Do you almost look at these albums as like a self portrait in a way? Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, if you listen to our first album, Warhorns of Midgard, and if you listen to Lightcrawler, for example, you will clearly hear that there is a major difference. I was 16 years old when I composed uh, Warhorns of Midgard. I'm 28, turning 29 now. I think that um, the music sounds a little bit more mature. I'm a little bit more mature. And also my interests are completely different. And I think from, uh, after after uh, during the time the, the the music got more serious and I, as i became a more serious person you know and also the lyrical themes are different and they are more serious and um yeah related to the present and not to the past yeah do you almost like look for inspiration or does inspiration just come out of nowhere sometimes both to be honest uh, there's uh, inspiration just hits me from time to time but uh, I also look for inspiration you know um, the different approaches I sometimes I just need a few days off and then the inspiration is there and I can start from scratch and uh, compose a new song but uh, sometimes I just have to sit in the studio <laughs> and you know work on it because I have a basic idea but uh, for some reason I cannot I cannot compose a song um, I just have to try it do you need music before you come up with the lyrics or could like a concept because tackling subject matters between mythology and life and stuff you know there's so many different angles you attack the lyrics do you need, could the lyrics or a story ever determine the music itself mm. well for, uh, for me uh, I, I think most of the time I, I start with the music uh, but I have a kind of a, a theme in my mind. For Lightcrawler, it was the way around. I, I, I wanted to, to write those lyrics for so long, and I, then I composed the lyrics, and then I tried to compose a song. Uh, so in, for me, in Lightcrawler, the lyrics matter more than the song, actually. Are you ever worried you'll have like the best lyrics ever, but then they're always like one syllable over or under the arrangement, and like you can't fit them anywhere? <laughs> Yeah, it happens. It happens uh, every time, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, so I, I always have to cross out some words or whatever, and then I, you know, there's a friend of mine who always helps me because I, actually I try to, you know, I have a proper uh, written English <laughs> for the lyrics at least. But when this happens, you are in the studio. I mean, for me, it's it's fine because I have an old studio, so I can do it whenever I want to. But when this happens, or happened in the past, you, 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 you are in the vocal booth, and it simply does not work. So, and then you're fucked, and <laughs> then you have a problem. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, they always, like, it's so funny interviewing so many vocalists on how, like, they all have different perceptions of being in the vocal booth. Like, it, like some say they love it, they say, like, it's their home, it's their environment, and others say that it's, like, a prison for them. Yeah, I think it depends on the vocal booth. Uh, I recorded vocals for uh, Age of Pandora. It was a very, very tiny, narrow vocal booth. And uh, I think we had 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, I, I don't know what's in what, what it is in Fahrenheit, uh, but it's pretty warm. <laughs> so um, outside and inside, I think we had, it was so hot. And this was really... It was the the, the, the the shittiest three days in my life. Almost, <laughs> it was. I got a headache after the first five minutes. I heard some uh, studio like producers or whatever were like in the studio. They sometimes make the conditions in a studio deteriorating on purpose. If they know they're making a metal album, they want it to sound even more angry and more raw. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it was uh, it was the the aim. <laughs> yeah. For this. Yeah, and do you like to leave the lyrics open to interpretation, or do you try to engage the listener into the story that you're singing about? Uh, most of the time, I try to leave it open. Um, I just did it for Light Crawler. I mean, it's it has a metaphorical meaning, and I yeah, it's more or less open. I think it's more interesting. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that Northgard's music is a very experimental. Like, when I heard Lightworker, I mean, it was a great surprise to get another Northgard song. I wasn't expecting that. Um, but, like, you know, I thought it was very different, like, you know, from listening to Malady X and listening to, you know, Shades of War and Guardians of Sanity and Epitaph. Like, like it had many different vibes. So, like, it, it, obviously you guys like to experiment with your sound as much as possible, right? Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I think... Um 
every there are always a f one, two, or sometimes three years between the albums. And um, for Lightcrawler, for example, uh, I, I found the inspiration, the musical inspiration, when I was on tour with another band, a band um, which is in a completely different genre, you know. And it's not on purpose, but uh, sometimes my musical interests uh, change and then also the music I compose changes. Yeah, and obviously playing with so many different bands, it has to teach you new things to like apply to another band, right? Yeah. I'd imagine that, you know, I thought Renegades was a phenomenal album. Maybe did that at all maybe influence the future for the next North God album, or do you try to yeah, keep them separate? I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. I think you're right. Because uh, it's more groovy. I mean, Renegades was way more groovy than the previous albums. And I think it influenced Northgard as well. Not on purpose, but it just happens, you know. I mean, I played the songs so, so many times. And then, you know, when, you, when you're sitting there and compose a new song, I think, yeah, true. Yeah, and like... And it, it, because sometimes when an artist plays in multiple bands, they want to try to keep them as separate as possible. But I think whether you want it to or not, it's going to influence you one way or another, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. In terms of your guitar work, do you have like a theoretical element that you follow? Like, do you have a background in classical music or like a study theory at all? Or are you more on the self-taught side? Uh, both. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I wasn't at a... Uh, um, music university or whatever or a college a music college would but i i had some kind of a music school i i, I taught uh, i was a teacher guitar teacher for many years so i studied the the, the music theory um but it, it has been, it's years ago um so both but you know i i, I I not always follow the, the music theory to compose a song. Most of the time, it's just what comes to my mind. And then, of course, when you when you try to to play double leads, um, of course, you have to uh, think about the musical theory to, to make it better and make it work, you know. But, uh, yeah, this is how I work. Yeah, it's, like, good to know the theory, but you don't let it, like, enslave you, right? Yeah, true, because otherwise it's just too... Uh, you know, to theoretically, and uh, it's not music. Music should always be something what comes from the heart, or uh, what what is um, an instant, uh, yeah, instant vibes. Yeah, it seems like every musician I've interviewed from Bavaria. I interviewed Dark Fortress uh, a couple months ago, yeah. and I interviewed Obscura uh, a couple years ago. They always have the theoretical background. I think it's a Bavarian thing. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I don't know, but Obscura, for sure, they are pretty good musicians, um, uh, so uh, I, I guess that they have a, a theoretical background. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned that the music comes from the feeling and, and the heart, which I think is great, but do you find it maybe like the longer you're working on something, the harder it is to kind of maintain that emotional spark in a way? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And especially for Lightcrawler, um, it was different. It was so hard because when we released, uh, when we have released a single in the past, it was always a, a single as a part of a complete album. And this time it was just a single because we wanted to shorten the time be, uh, between the le uh, between Melody X and the next album. So it was a completely different approach. And for me, I had the time to... You know, sit there, work on it, mix the mix the song, and then uh, while mixing, I thought, oh, maybe I, I re-record the guitars, and and then I got lost in too many details, and uh, yeah, it, it was really hard, and I, I worked on it until the last day, you know. Yeah, some artists told me, I was interviewing uh, Abigail Williams one time, and they were telling me they try to leave their music very raw, and the fact that it's not perfect, it captures that moment even more so uh, like it seems like uh, like being a perfectionist could sometimes like even be a disadvantage yeah i i, I think so uh and i think i i had i have to agree that this happened um with like I, I i don't want to say that the song would have been better uh, without the per perfection but uh I, I just know that i we would have been able to release it earlier if this if i wouldn't got lost within all these fucking details yeah that was the problem. 
Yeah, being an artist, like you, you sometimes your being an artist, sometimes your artwork could become your greatest enemy because you get so lost in it and like yeah. it, and. But I'd imagine though, like you said though, it's still representative of who you are. So like obviously, it happens for a reason, and people yeah. are liking it. Yeah. You ready for the most difficult question of the whole interview? I try to. Because yeah. I've noticed, like, so you have, like, just on Malady X alone, you have a song like Voyage to Decay that's a minute and a half long, but then you have a song like uh, Eye for an Eye that's almost five minutes, and so on and so forth. How do you know when a song is done? When it feels right, when it feels done. Um, Voyage to Decay is an intro, basically. That's why it is so short, but... Um, to answer your question, I, I was composing a new song today and I was wondering exactly the same question. Is it is it done yet? I, then I looked up uh, the, the, the minutes or the, yeah, the time code and then I tried to, you know, get a coffee, get back, I got back to the studio and I listened again and then I simply had the feeling that it it's done and then it's done maybe it changes when i do the final recordings maybe i add one another chorus or whatever but this is it simply has to feel right yeah it is a feeling thing and obviously every artist goes through this i'd imagine there's artist blocks uh occasionally as well right yeah yeah so if you don't mind me asking being an artist is there a strategy to coming to overcoming an artist block in the future i'm, I'm asking this on behalf of some of my uh, fellow musician friends as well who are going through it well unfortunately i don't have a strategy for it <laughs> um yeah if if you find out about it let me know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it is kind of uh, difficult. Like uh, I was interviewing another band, and they say that sometimes the greatest uh, strength or the the hardest thing to do is laying stuff down and coming back to it later. This is absolutely true. Um, to to come back on uh, to Lightcrawler, uh, everybody recommended to you know take a to take a break and then work on it one week later or whatever but I, I couldn't I couldn't and this was the problem <laughs> it was the problem to me I mean I, I think don't get me wrong the song turned out great I'm really happy with the reactions I'm happy with the video but uh, for me it was just a hard time and I, I could not stop working on it you know uh, there was one day break and then I got back um, to the studio because it's just in another house so uh, prob uh, probably this is also a problem you know um, because I w was able to work on it uh, all, all night long <laughs> yeah and I, isn't it also like the worst where you, you just feel that creative energy the impulse to create but nothing is you're not getting the satisfying results that's got to be the worst right yeah it's frustrating <laughs> yeah and uh the final question um i wanted to ask you is really um when it comes to playing live because obviously you know playing live is obviously completely different than being in the studio but maybe is there anything similar creative wise to playing live versus when you're in the studio creative wise um hmm. creative wise uh, well it's a hard question No, I think for me, life and studio is completely different because uh, most of the time when I play with Northgard, uh, a live show is over within five minutes for me because I, I don't, you know, it, it's like I'm in, I'm in trance. I don't know why, because I have to concentrate because I'm singing, playing the lead guitar. And it, for me, it's so different, you know, I don't, it's, I simply have to work. So, and in the studio, it's different because you can't take the time you need. So for me, it's different. I, so I can't can't tell any similarities. Sorry. Yeah, but you, so you you kind of like go away in like a zone when you're playing live. Yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely true. Um, it happens with all bands, but especially with Northgard because um, there's so much stuff going on. With Equilibrium, I can enjoy the show itself a little bit better because I, um, you know, I'm just playing the guitar, so I can interact with the people a little bit more, and I'm not, I, uh, I don't have, I'm not stick to the microphone. So um, th that's the difference what I experience every time. But yeah. 
You should do a you should do a tour where you play with both bands on the same bill, and then we could see the different sides of you. We did twice, twice, uh, yeah, twice European tours. We did in the past. It was hard, <laughs> believe me. Well, why didn't you bring it to North America? We would love that. Oh uh, yeah, I know. We we always would love to come to to North America. I don't know for some reason, it, it did not work out. Uh, I mean, w there have been offers for for Equilibrium, also one for North Card, uh, but uh, I don't know. It, it never worked out. It, I mean, especially for North Card, sometimes it's 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 tough because um, my bandmates they they have a side job. And I don't know. Uh, for some reason, the the the, the 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 timings were bad every time, and it really sucks because we want to come to, over to the United States. Hopefully, it's possible that there there is a a possible tour in twenty twenty one. So let's hope uh, Corona is over then. Yeah, let's hope. And just before we go, that led me into last. Is there just anything else that you would like to promote? For any of your projects in terms of new music or obviously any potential live shows i heard europe is actually getting a little bit better now so i'd imagine that uh maybe you'll be playing a couple more shows in europe soon yeah yeah um you're right europe is pretty okay especially uh, germany but we still have some tough restrictions here but there is one show remaining with equilibrium in uh, december uh, in Finland, uh, we are really looking forward to it. And what I definitely have to mention, um, there is an Equilibrium single uh, coming out very, very soon. So keep an eye open. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dom. Everybody, we are here with Dom of Northgard and Equilibrium. Be sure to pick up the new single, Lightcrawler. If you haven't already, it is absolutely awesome. And we will see you next time on Heavy New York.